Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The Sprint Life Pro is marketed as the Swiss Army knife of electronics. Available from Sprint for $300 with a two-year service agreement, the Life Pro combines a hotspot, Pico projector, battery bank, and Android device into a neat 4.7 by 4.7 by 1.1 inch 14 ounce package. The left side of the Life Pro houses the adjustment ring for the projector, buttons for power and the power bank, as well as slots for SIM and micro SD cards. To the rear of the device is power, USB, full size HDMI, and a headphone jack. Underneath the Live Pro, you'll find a standard mounting point for attaching the Live Pro to a tripod and a kickstand for angling the projector. The entire package is built around a 5,000 mAh lithium ion battery that can drive the hotspot for up to 10 hours. It was also enough to fully charge the 3,100 mAh battery in my OnePlus One and still have enough juice for four hours of hotspot operation. That is a lot of power, but running the projector will kill the battery in about 100 minutes and having the hotspot active at the same time will drop your runtime below an hour. And unfortunately, because of the large battery and power draw, you can't charge the Live Pro from a USB port like you might with a standard hotspot. It needs a 12 volt adapter, which limits the charging options. The Live Pro comes with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean and a 4 inch 800 by 480 WVGA touchscreen. In addition to the touchscreen, the Live Pro has the full Android complement of buttons as well as quick keys for volume, projector, and sleep. I was a little disappointed that the Live Pro uses Android 4.2, but the dual core 1.2 GHz processor makes it feel snappy. And even 4.2 gives the Live Pro notable features like the ability to wirelessly project and a secondary device for checking your apps. The projector is literally the bright spot of the Live Pro. Sporting a 100 lumen light source and a DLP element, the Live Pro natively projects 854 by 480 though it will scale inputs of up to 1080p. In addition to being able to play whatever media might be in the micro SD slot, USB port, or coming through HDMI, the Live Pro can also display whatever is seen on screen. The Live Pro packs a single speaker in the bottom of the unit that is plenty loud, which is good because when the fan starts up, you're going to need some volume. With decent indoor light power, loud if tinny audio, and an interface that can make the Live Pro a self-contained business projector or theater, the Live Pro definitely gets props for packing decent features into a small package. But then we get to the hotspot. And the hotspot on the Live Pro is, in a word, poor. I took the Live Pro to Petaluma, San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland, Berkeley, and Las Vegas, and it very rarely connected to Sprint's new Spark LTE service with any measurable signal strength. In fact, it almost never connected to Sprint's 3G service. We thought that there may have been a problem with the review unit, but even replacing it left us with subpar cellular coverage. What makes this unacceptable is that I've tried other Sprint devices, including a Galaxy Note and other Sprint hotspots, and connection speeds through those devices reached past 9 to 15 megabits per second, while the Live Pro struggled to go past 1 and 5 on a supposedly superior network. Still, with the combination of the other features, the lack of a usable hotspot wouldn't be a problem if the Sprint Live Pro weren't a hotspot that was supposed to use Sprint's latest generation LTE service that you had to pay for every month for two years. The somewhat sensical combination of technologies in the Sprint Live Pro left me scratching my head, wondering if this was the most stupidly awesome gadget ever or the most awesomely stupid Frankenstein's monster. Stupidly awesome. Awesomely stupid. Stupid awesome. Awesome. So stupid. Oh, so awesome. Oh, so stupid. In the end, the Sprint Live Pro is an interesting multifunction device with really bad implementations of some of those functions. You want to like this, don't you? I really do. I like the combination of gadgets. You know, it's a projector, it's an Android device, it's a battery bank, it's a hotspot. <laughs> The, the problem is, you know, as I said... Does few, none of them well. It does none of those things well. I mean, the projector is okay, but it's underpowered. The battery yeah. bank's not big enough. The hotspot's horrible. I mean, if it's a hotspot. You're paying for service. If I can only get one megabit down and, you know, half a megabit up, it's, it's crap. And, and here's the worst thing about it. I've used Sprint devices, and they are much, much faster. So there's something wrong with the oh. device. It's not oh. Sprint. All right. 
Uh, although the support from Sprint isn't great either. Right, right. So let's get the pros and cons. Uh, on the pros, I do like the projector. I do like the battery bank. I like the idea of building smarts into a hotspot. So, you know, um, Android, the yeah. projector, the battery, that's great. On the con side, it's got to be that uh, it's an old version of Android, which I don't understand why you would do that. It's got to be that the charging is limited because you have to charge it via this this 12-volt plug here. You can't yeah. charge it from a, a USB source. And, of course, it's a very weak hotspot. And if that's what you're really paying for, this is not the product for you. If you were to pick one thing that this does well, would it be the projector? It would be the projector. Okay. And, and I would say this. If I had the ability to buy this for like $300 but no contract, right. I actually would get it. I, I, it. It is a decent battery bank. It's a very cool projector. It's got a lot of features that I'd like to use but I'm not paying that 24 months of service right. for a hotspot that doesn't really work. It's right. a don't buy. It's a do not buy, sad to say, on, what is this called, the Sprint? It's Live Pro. Super Velodyne, <laughs> Super Heterodyne, Transmitter, Receiver. You know, my son, who lives kind of in a quasi-frat house in college at CU Boulder, said, can you send me a, a projector TV? They want to watch the football games on, you know, 80 inches. I should have just sent him this. You could send, and the best yeah, part. Yeah, sure, son. The best part is he could watch it on this tiny little screen <laughs> and then project it onto a tiny wall screen. And it's the best of all worlds, would, really. His, his frat brothers would have killed him. I think so. Yeah, I would have, it would have been homicide. Yeah, yeah. All right, hey, thank you. Robert Balasser, he is the digital Jesuit. You find him on Know How, Coding 101. Padres Corner. Paco, I like that. Paco. Paco. You don't call it Paco? I don't call it Paco. I do now. All right. <laughs> and, of course, uh, This Week in Enterprise Tech, right here on This Week in Tech, the Twit Network.